Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Ryan Gann. Um, I'm the uh, El Camino College Systems and Technical Services Librarian. I'm also a, an assistant uh, professor. I'm faculty at, at the college. Uh, we're a community college located in Torrance, California. So I'm excited to, to talk to you all and share um, my journey with you all. And uh, I can remember what it was like to be in a, uh, San Jose State as a, an high school student, kind of wondering what I was going to do. And um, if you have questions, just go ahead and type them in the chat. I have the chat window on my second monitor. And uh, yeah, just interrupt me. So. Uh, well, here we go. So um, the title of this presentation is Becoming a Tech Librarian, uh, Where the Jobs Are, What to Know, and How to Prepare. So hopefully this will give you insight on, you know, where the job you probably want to get employment pretty soon, um, what to know to get uh, to be competitive for those jobs, and how to prepare uh, while you're in uh, the high school for these jobs. So, all right, here we go. So tech librarianship, it's an amazing career and, and you're needed. We need more tech librarians. So just to sort of background on myself, I was a, a teen librarian. I became a public library manager. I also was a paraprofessional as a library clerk and library assistant for both jobs. I also have a kind of a paraprofessional to professional presentation that I did well. So if you look on the YouTube, uh, you'll find that as well. So when I got started for my mid-career uh, switch, I went, um, I moonlighted at El Camino College as a community college part-time librarian. And then I, I found that I liked the work so much that when a systems and technical services librarian position opened, I applied for it. But to do that, I, I needed to craft my resume and kind of craft my cover letter to, to talk about skills. And I also, since I knew it was coming up, I made some preparations in order to, to be more attractive to the position. So what I did was I thought about what kind of tech, uh, tech skills do I have that maps out on the job description? So I said, oh, you know, I've done some uh, queries in my own um, library system, which was Cer Circe Dynex at Orange Public Library. Um, I, and then I read on Innovative Sierra. I read the manuals. Um, I found out that there was a California Community College initiative that was uh, a statewide, what they call uh, the library services platform migration to uh, a new system called Ex Libris Alma Primo. And I looked, I searched on the internet. I used my general library skills as a, even though I was a public librarian, to look uh, and read about these programs and and kind of self-educate myself about this. Um, so my advice for you, if you work in a library already or if you're volunteering, you know, uh, try and run uh, queries in the in your own uh, integrated library system if you have access to that. If not, there's free technical manuals for every system on the internet. So as you're reading um, job descriptions and they say, okay, we need you to know Innovative Sierra or Innovative Millennium or Alma Primo, look those up and they'll have like general training guides for you that you can use. Okay, so I wanna, the purpose of this program too is also to talk about that tech librarians are in demand. And the reason why I talk about tech librarianship is because of the skills are really needed. And so if you have these skills or if you start slotting yourself for the, you'll, I, I, I um, Sincerely believe that you'll have a better chance of landing a job as a, as a full-time librarian professional. So what are tech librarians? Tech librarians, they come with a myriad of titles. They're uh, systems, technical services like I am. You might be a metadata librarian, user experience, digital collections, digital services, electronic resources, emerging technologies. So a lot of these libraries, library titles uh, they encompass, uh, since I, I think institutions aren't totally sure about what they want, a lot of these skills are kind of uh, secondary skills, though you'll find the certain skills being repeated under, well, we want a metadata librarian, but they're going to configure the discovery for our ILS, which also a systems librarian would do. So if you're thinking, wait, I want, you know, there's so many titles, um, a lot of the skills that you that you study uh, these uh, software assistant, the ILS, they will help you uh, be able to apply for these jobs with a little bit of um, modifications between the between them. So, 
Code for Lib, this website that I have listed, is a, a very good resource to find uh, tech job, tech librarian jobs all over the nation. And then, so take a look at the job descriptions and don't be scared off because um, it may look like an alphabet soup, like, oh, you need Mark Edit, CV Edit, but you are librarians to be and you'll be able to do those information searches and look up just like um, how you try to find for information. You are great information seekers. So find that, you know, take a look at these um, websites, these programs, you know, read the manuals. They're often more simpler than uh, their meta, that they seem to be. Like you have a lot of skills since you work with tech on a daily basis. Um, usually a lot, of, I bring up the book, The Accid Accidental Systems Librarian because Usually these things, these jobs are accidental. Yeah, no one's really trained for them um, as they're usually librarians and they say, hey, you're good at tech. Okay, you're going to be the new systems librarian or the tech librarian. So you all have a unique position where you're still in library school. There's a lot of, I was looking at the class schedules. They have a lot of tech, tech classes. Uh, which I will show you in the coming future that you can take and prepare yourself uh, to have these skills when you apply for these jobs. Okay, so again, don't be scared because if even if you don't understand the entire technology, the entire program, the entire library uh, service platform, it's okay because a lot of the problems that you will come up, um, you, you can take them as a task by task basis. There's manuals and also the vendor that you can talk to that will guide you through the process as well. So as you get used to this, you'll gain more experience. So I wanted to stress that for all of you. Okay, if you have any questions, just feel free to interject. I'm keeping an eye on the chat as well. Okay, so you're asking, well, Ryan, you know, your systems technical uh, services library, well, how do I get to where you're at? I'm in, I'm in library school right now, I'm in high school. What classes should I take? So I looked over the schedule. Um, take a beginning cataloging and classification class and uh, a metadata class if you can. Um, when you're working as a tech librarian, you're dealing with a lot of uh, MARC records or metadata. So that's really great to have under your belt. Um, the Info 246-10 series is really great. I'd suggest that you should at least take one programming language class, which are their, their intro classes. Um, you know, MySQL is summing up, there's a Python class. Um, be familiar with HTML that you can do some basic HTML editing. That's really goes well well for like uh, web web mon, um, web management stuff. Sometimes you don't you're not even doing um, just deep code, but you're actually using like an editor. I use OU Campus, and that's pretty easy to do. I use HTML to do fine tuning on it. Um, XML is a is a markup language. Uh, I'd suggest knowing like a, a markup language. Uh, because a lot of tags map out to uh, database headings when you view them in a, a CSV format, in a, in a spreadsheet format. Um, also, you might want to look into taking the automated library systems class. That's a, a class on, on what libraries, on the library software that makes, uh, it's the technology that makes books and other database articles, other information available for patrons. Um, Take a look at the seminars. If something looks really interesting, like cutting edge, I highly recommend uh, taking that class. So you might, there, some are coming up, our user experience. I saw Makerspace class, digital asset management. Try to take those as well after you're done with your core classes. Another hot topic I wanna say is open education resources, uh, zero textbook costs. Now what that means is that, uh, you know, colleges are, they want to get. They want to make college affordable, so they're trying to find information resources that are open source for students. Uh, that's been coming up down in the pike. Uh, uh, 2017, 2018, they had uh, a lot of test colleges in California that were that were trying this out in community colleges, and now it's going to get rolled out. So that you're going to hear more and more about OER librarianship. So see at least be a f uh, familiar with that. Okay. Here we go again. So let's say you're taking these classes, like how do you put this into like the real world experience? So this is a great opportunity. I did two internships uh, during while I was in high schools and uh, 
this is a great way for you after you're taking your classes, you're saying, hey, how can I use a programming language? Or how can I propose using the, the programming language that I did for a project? Uh, is there a metadata project? Uh, maybe something, a cataloging project. So I highly, highly recommend getting an internship. Um, it was, a, it would, it was a, uh, a place where I could use my class knowledge in real world projects and it kind of made me more interested in the learning process. Now, what the, I did with these projects when I went for my first professional job, these might seem very small projects to you, but they're a way of how you can build a story when you're writing your cover letter, you're, write, you're building your resume, you're speaking to very specific real world experience and projects, that when you go in your interview, you can say, well, I took an XML class and then I had my internship where I used XML data to create tags in order to import metadata for this you know, institution, uh, this library that I was at or this archive that I was at and I helped edit that out and bam, you have like real world experience with your highly technical skill. Um, I also wanted, there was something new that I saw were sort of, uh, which were uh, virtual internships. So that seemed pretty neat. Um, those most likely you're working remotely, probably working with some tech. And so, um, you know, take a look at those as well. So take an internship. I highly recommend it. Okay. So, but what about software too? Like those are the tech skills. So, Circe Dynex and Innovative Sierra, those are integrated library systems. They're library software uh, that put out catalogs. They have the back end where mark records are attached to books that are, or, or uh, are library databases that are cataloged in the computer. So I highly recommend getting, you know, taking a look at these manuals online, get your, get your head around it, take that uh, integrated library systems class that looks like it's offered every semester. So um, what I also recommend for one of my um, students that I mentored was um, to get Ex Libris Alma Primo certification because it's free to get. Uh, those links over there, you can sign up um, and, and get certified. They have training courses that are open. So I, I think you'll be able to, to sign up with your, your uh, EDU address, your uh, EDU email address. And um, to give you a little window, at least in California, almost every University of California college, Cal State School, and now community college, because we're, we're in the midst of uh, finalizing our migration to Alma Primo, uh, that's what I've been doing for, for this past year and a half, are using Alma Primo. So check that out. If not, you can, and if you want to feel more comfortable, try Circe Dynix or Innovative Sierra. Download some of these um, programs that are free that I use, um, Mark Edit, it helps me edit records, mark, mark records when I needed to um, preserve local fields when I was uh, doing the LSP migration, uh, CSV edit. Um, so databases, when data is extracted, uh, it, it comes in spreadsheets. So there's a column for like, let's say if you're extracting uh, patron data, it would have like their first name would be a column, their last name would be a column, uh, their phone number would be a column, uh, email is a column, and that's how um, programs apprehend uh, data. So also um, maybe take a look at how to work with a, a learning management software. You might be using Canvas. Here's a link from the iSchool that has like Canvas instructor tutorials. You know, they're not built. It's, I was very adventurous when I was training myself to apply to become a systems librarian because I knew um, I wasn't in school anymore, so I did a lot of searching for information, trying to um, put together my resume, my cover letter, and my interview um, so I could pitch myself as being a systems librarian and showing that I had the skills or at least some of the, the desire um, to, to learn some of the skills as well. Okay, so I also wanted to talk, I talked a lot about tech skills, but soft skills are very important too. So when I talk about project management is like, how can you be a leader of a project? So 
and how to manage the flow and the progress of a project. So when I was interviewing for my current position, I did research. I was like, oh, wow, how, you know, what, what can I do to because I really want this position? So I found out that the California community colleges were beginning a, uh, an RFP, which means a request for proposal for a new library services platform. All the community colleges as a consortium were putting out to bid to go to a single system because A, it, re it, um, it uh, reduces costs um, because you're able to negotiate a contract. Two, um, it's great because everyone's doing it at the same time. So implementation is easier because uh, everyone's going along on the same uh, way in like a same class. It's an opportunity for collaboration. So when I found out that was coming up um, and I knew it was Alma Primo, I talked, uh, I talked about it in my, my library interview. And so what happened was after the fact, when I did get the position, one of the things that they had told me that which made me so attractive was that I knew that this was coming down the pike. Um, and that I was the only candidate to talk about this. So um, when you are researching, when you're looking for these positions, research the institution, um, research the skills, like look up, don't be scared about like the skills that are, that they are asking for, like look them up, uh, create a log, create a mission and a strategy to move forward. Um, so getting back to, um, project management uh, and, the, and uh, what it does in the migration. So I work with the team, uh, the cataloger, the digital resources librarian, and the circulation supervisor, the public access librarian. So in this process, I figure out, okay, what areas of the software uh, uh, fulfillment, they call it fulfillment for circulation, does the cataloger needs to know, the digital resources librarian needs to know, and also communicating with the vendor and also IT. So vendor relations, when I talk about vendors, these are the, the, tech, the technical people that do the software. So like when I mean a vendor, I mean Ex Libris. That's the one that we do for Alma Primo, the library services platform. I talk to them on Salesforce. I say, hey, we're having a problem. Um, our barcodes aren't coming out correctly. Um, this is how far that I've gone. Oh, it looks like the zeros have been cut off from the barcode and hence when we scan it in, it's wrong in the new migrated data. And so I present something very simply, how far I've tried to got, I've gotten, it's kind of like a reverse reference interview. When you're a librarian and you're interviewing a patron on what they need, uh, you're asking questions to kind of suss out like what you, what information sources they need. You're kind of like the intelligent patron going, oh, I don't know, I, this is my problem, I've done X, Y, Z, how can you help me? And so the vendor will actually supply you with solutions. So, um, and so it's great, you don't need to know everything all at once. Um, now for information, information technology, so you might be part of an organization that handles the back end, they do the network, um, they um, handle like installation on software on computers, uh, they, they do integration of peripherals, like let's say barcode scanners. So they handle like kind of the, that type of work. Um, you're also collaborating with them as well. Um, you're trying to say, hey, I'm part of the library, you're representing library interests, but they're representing like, they're servicing all the other entities, whether it's like a city government, maybe at the university level, um, and they're doing all the departments. So you're, you're talking to them uh, what you need and also what your colleagues need, trying to translate it into information tech talk, then taking that back and transfer, tran uh, translating that for your colleagues. Um, so when you're working that, you might be thinking like, oh, I'm trying to interface and I'm having difficulty. So don't be afraid to ask your manager, what, that's what I mean by administrative administration, to, to see how you're interfacing and where to work at. So. All right, so your coworkers, you're, you deal with very complex technical problems and it's okay um, that you need to translate that for them. 
I see you want. I'm going to go answer that for you. Um, and so you're trying to translate your complex work into don't use jargon. Try to try to do it as simply as possible because your colleagues are also specialized in their own roles and they may not know what you're talking about. So, and also be really, um, really, really um, just helpful and friendly. I have people talk to me about some uh, tech problems and if I can fix it right there, I'll do it. Uh, if not, if I'm busy, I'll refer them to put in a help ticket for IT. So um, what may be something very simple for you is actually really hard for other people. And so be, have some grace, um, you know, candor, like be empathetic. So, okay, so Juan's question is, how is the migration between Sierra to Alma going? What kind of support are you getting from Ex Libris? My library is currently looking into other ILS's LSPs. We use Sierra and EDS and are looking to Alma Primo WMS and Folio. Okay, so what I can speak to that is um, this, the migration between Sierra to Alma, it's, it's going pretty well. Um, the support that I got from Ex Libris, they're very responsive on Salesforce. Um, I've done the extra data extraction um, and that's information's been shared. If you need links for that, I can uh, send me an email. It's on my, uh, so I like Alma Primo. It's probably most, uh, one of the most robust platforms. Uh, it might be expensive, um, but um, yeah, I hope that answers your question, Juan. We're at, we're going to, we're going, uh, we're almost at the end. We're in like cutover process right now, which means the final uh, data upload. Okay, so um, what kind of, okay, so yeah. So when you're applying for these jobs too, and you need to emphasize your soft skills as well. Like you can have the tech skills, but you need soft skills to, um, to give over, to, 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 to have that other half because um, you want to talk about your a customer service story that you can offer, like I handled this in a, in a way, and that can map out to other work experience that you have. Um, I had a, I have a coworker, vendor, or colleague. Um, I had a story about working, uh, uh, what kind of problems we had, or we were working on a, a collaborating on a project, and this is how the flow went. This is what I did. This is what they did. This is how we were able to work together to create something greater than uh, you know us doing it alone. Um, and then project, like if there's a certain project that you can set, that maps out on. So when I was talking about projects that I did in the past as a public librarian, I did um, a free lunch program for the summer that I went to the food bank. I recruited a food bank. Um, I attended um, a library workshop on how to give out free lunches. Um, I drew up all the plans. I drew up the proposal. Um, I also did, when I was weeding my branch library, I was able to run queries using Cersei Dynex. I explained it down to the details of the technical details. And it seemed like a very minor thing uh, to me at the time, but it all these kind of projects lent credence to that I was I was a good project manager. And so these same skills have mapped out as I've been uh, proceeding as um, a migration, LSP migration project manager. Okay, so your resume, cover letter, and interview advice. I want to give you some give you some practical uh, advice about that. So, you want to list your classes that are particular to the position. So you don't have to list all your core classes, but if some of your technical classes that you've taken, like your programming classes, um, and your internship projects, have to do with the job description, go ahead and give a, a few lines about that um, in your. Um, in your job description or your internship subscription because you might not have a lot right now. It's okay to list more. Um, in your cover letter, talk about those programming classes you took in iSchool, uh, those technical classes in iSchool. What have you done with them? Hopefully you've taken an internship like, uh, like I advised and you use these. That way you can say, I've done the theory, I put it in a practice as an internship. Um, the reason why I talk about queries like searches, they don't modify data in the ILS. So you can run as many queries, you can practice. Uh, you can say, oh, I want to find out how many books that we have, what are the age? What's the age of all the books before 2010? Uh, what's all the, what are all the books um, the age after 2015? Um, those are very 
um, simple searches, but they also tell you a lot of information. It can say, oh, what is the age of the collection? So people want to know that because if they have like old books from the 1960s that make like 50 or 60% of their collection, well, yeah, there's going to be a lot of weeding that needs to be done. Get familiar with some like Mark and Bib frame cataloging. I recommend cataloging because um, you're more get, you're going to work with those records, um, even and also metadata when you're working with information. Um, you're going to be working with those records. Talk in more detail about the tech work you've done in in your cover letter. Um, in an interview, again, have your stories. Um, be prepared, prepared to tell a customer service story a collaboration story, a tech problem solving story. Okay, so this last slide is resources. Um, when this, when this um, is archived, you can come back to this and typing up. Some of these I wanna explain. So the first one uh, is a resource from 2011. Some of the links are broken, but you can look them up in archive.org, uh, the Wayback Machine. Um, Again, that's like kind of a sys tech librarian thing. Like if it's broken and you have a problem, um, you need to kind of figure out how to fix it. So that's how I, I was like, oh, I want to read these articles. Oh, wait, they're broken. I'll put them in Wayback Machine. Okay, and I got to read them. Uh, see if you can join LRRT or other listserv so you can kind of get a feel for what uh, tech librarians do. These are uh, the technical services associations. Um, SU alumnus Whitney Watkins. Um, she is a systems librarian. Uh, she has a lot of experience. This is uh, up to date from 2016. Um, she talks about uh, what information is, like being a librarian of information. So, and that's becoming more and more uh, apparent to me as I progress along as well. Other systems librarian, um, but they, I think they'll map out as tech librarian advice to there's talks about metadata librarians. So you have access to these articles and databases. So check them out. Um, so a book uh, that came out as a accidental systems librarian, uh, that's the updated second edition. So go ahead and check that out. And then finally, a little last, use LastPass because you're gonna be logging into a lot of things. I use LastPass, which it kind of keeps my passwords in a vault. Um, and then when I go to a website, I don't have to remember my password or reuse an old, an old password and it will work. So um, closing advice, um, check out these conferences, Code for Lib, Internet Librarian. Also there are virtual conferences. There was an emerging technologies conference that was just uh, uh, either this week or, no, excuse me, last week. Um, so check those out. Those are more, those are free to, free to you know, those, those virtual conferences are, are mostly free. So, or you can watch the recordings. Code for Lib has recordings of their, their past conferences. So check those out. Again, um, if you have any questions, uh, feel, feel free to contact me at argan at elcamino.edu. And um, yeah, so I've talked a lot. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and post them in the chat and we can go ahead and talk about them. Ryan, well, we are waiting, excuse me, while we're waiting for people to type questions in, I wanted to add on to the Code for Lib recommendation that you made. One of the things that I do in order to sort of monitor what's happening in tech librarianship is to sign up for the Code for Lib job alert service. And every day in my email queue, I'll get from three to five job postings. And the thing that's most valuable about them is the description of the job requirements and the description of the activities involved in the job. So if you're thinking about systems librarianship, I would highly recommend you start just monitoring the jobs that are coming through Code for Lib because it tells you sort of to Ryan's point, what people are looking for and what skills you're going to be needing. All right, so questions? Ryan, what's your response to that? 
from Jennifer. Oh, okay. Yes. So yeah, it was possible to do an internship while working uh, full-time in a library. So what I did was I worked full-time at Orange Public Library as a library assistant. And what I did was I interned um, at a uh, Anaheim Public Library. I did that for and that was a great way because since I was working full time, I couldn't do higher um, functions from my job description. So I was able to be at the li you know, the reference desk. So um, internships, they don't take a lot of hours too. They, they know that you're in school. Um, there's also virtual library, virtual internships too, where you can work on your own time. So internships aren't like having a, a second job. They're all, they're only, um, I think most of them are, are part-time. So, um, and don't be afraid to say, Hey, I work full time in a library. Like here are my hours. Like what can I, can I squeeze in? Cause that's what I did actually when I was working full time as a public library manager, uh, when I was moonlighting, I, I said, Hey, um, I'd really like to work for your organization. Uh, but I'm only available this day. And they were able to fit me in. Like I worked like a three hour shift. It didn't seem a lot, but I built upon that experience. Uh, in future positions. And um, yeah, I worked every other week. And that actually, I was able to cobble that together to be an, uh, an attractive candidate for my current job. So I hope that answers your question, Jennifer. If not, uh, please feel free to ask more clarifying questions. And, and good on you for working in a library too. So you're, 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 that's great. See if you can go ahead and have access to the ILS, try to generate reports, Try to read about more about the ILS that you're working on in, in, in the library. Any other questions? And Ryan, do you see the question there from Angela? Oh, okay. I see that now. Okay, so what's a typical day for a tech librarian? So I can speak to that as a systems and technical services librarian. So. Um, I'm in the middle of a migration project. And what that means is we're moving from an, from our old system, which is Innovative Sierra, and I'm moving to Alma Primo Ex Libris. So what I'm doing is I look at the timeline that, and seeing where I'm at in the process. So uh, a typical day would be, hey, I come in, all right, I check my email. Is there any like technical problems? Like are able, people are able to get into the ILS? Um, is everything working? And then so are there any techni immediate technical problems that need to be dealt with right away? I say, I look no. And then uh, if not, then I'll go ahead and work on a number of projects that I might have up in the air. You're, you're always going to have some projects that are ongoing. So one of which was I had to, hey, there was this standing problem where one of the library databases wasn't working. So I would email the vendor and I'd, and I'd say, if I had the standing problem of, oh, the vendor hasn't gotten back to me, here's a helpful question. Here's a helpful inquiry for you when you're asking vendors questions. You're like, hey, I'm just checking in uh, on this uh, problem that I reported on, um, you know, like three days ago, four days, like last week. Uh, what's the progress on this? So you're going to find yourself a lot of asking questions like, where are we on this? Or reminding, pinging people is what I call it. Um, and uh, be very polite, even though you can vent like off the mic, but, but um, be polite when you're, you're pinging people. So, uh, so I'll see where we're at with that problem. Sometimes I need to get back to someone with another piece of a technical problem. Like, oh, did you try this other problem? Did you try, let's say um, I had one of my, my other colleagues, they're trying to verify a, a database, or, yeah, database working within the new system on the Primo. Um, there might be a permissions role. So we have permissions in the library services platform. You might be a cataloger or you might have acquisitions um, permissions or you might have like 
uh, circulation permissions. And there are different levels like operator, manager, et cetera. So um, she said she, was a, she wasn't able to get further to add the resource. So uh, I've added her new roles as an administrator, meaning I log into the computer, I log into Alma, and then I add roles by clicking on, clicking on the role and adding it to their account. Other tech library and stuff, it might be like, hey, the, you know, uh, the sometimes like I might come right away, like the projector's not working. So I'll go over there and try to check it out. Um, if it's, if it's something very extensive, then I might say, okay, this might be something for IT and I'll go ahead and let the person know how to create a ticket. So a lot of things are like tickets. Um, my talks with Ex Libris, I'm in what's called a Salesforce account. And when you have tech problems, you create tickets and they're listed as cases or you create cases. And cases are open, they, they get ferreted out to, to um, tech support. So someone will go ahead and get it. Um, sometimes they're not responded. So you can also like refresh the case and say, hey, we're, you know, I've, I've been waiting X amount of time days, you know, just want to know where we're at with this. And then I'll look at what tickets are still open because that reminds me of like what technical problems are still standing and I'll go ahead and close them or ask for more information on that. So um, tech librarian is great. I mean, there's there, you get something new every day. Uh, and I, I really enjoy being the, the bridge between technology and people. So does that clarify your question, Angela, or? Oh, okay, great. Um, and I also do some coding. So I'll, you know, I'll read up on codes. I'll read up some uh, on the listservs too. What um, type of coding would you be doing, Ryan? So, um, so one thing was when I was working with IT, I was using XML, which is uh, a, a markup language, extended markup language. Um, so we have a student information system where data is extracted and we're trying to put it into the new system, which is Alma Primo and automate that process. So XML has tags. So it'll say like student, a tag, and then like a close student tag. And that might list like tell this record, oh, this is a student record. Other tags might be faculty or staff. And then within those tags are first name, last name, that's a tag. And then there's info like, oh, Ryan, closed, closed tag. You know, it, it usually is like a slash. And um, when I was writing the code for that, um, the headings did not match up the headings that Alma Primo, some of the, the headings. So like, let's say student, but Alma Primo was looking for student underscore name. And then I would I looked at that code and was like, oh wait, that doesn't match up with the heading. We need to change that tag. Okay. And so that's kind of that's kind of the code that I do. So it's like not coding from the ground up, but it's like proofreading, like how you would proofread an essay. And then yeah, so things like that. Like um, yeah. So if I could ask one more question, and, and all of you who are on this uh, web class, cast, please jump in because I don't want to monopolize the questions, but I find this so fascinating. Um, for a student who starts the iSchool program, and I should point out here for all of you that Ryan is an alumni of uh, San Jose State. And so for a student, who starts the San Jose State program and say they have come into it on the basis of I love libraries, public libraries, I used to work in a public library, I, I used to go to them all of the time and I love books and I love reading, maybe I have an undergraduate degree in comparative literature and you, you come into the program and you start hearing about systems librarianship and you start seeing these courses in uh, programming languages and markup languages and those sorts of things. I know that the students that I work with tend to shy away if you say technology because they feel like they're not natural tech people. 
they don't they don't have that gene um they came in with the book gene or, or whatever the research gene would you say that pretty much anyone who's curious and willing to learn and comfortable sort of going beyond their comfort zone would be able to move into this type of a role if they were taking the courses that you had recommended in the iSchool program? Yes, I say definitely. I mean, I took kind of the, the other type, those book learned. So I took like a young adult literature class. I took like a history of books, but I also balanced it with these tech classes where I was like, oh, I want to go ahead and make sure that I'm marketable. Um, it also is, it's also working with information that, that, that curiosity will carry you through these classes and they're not as complex as you might think that they are. You're like, Oh, wow. You know, like this is JavaScript job, you know, the, the high school is great. They'll take you from the very beginning into the, the middle of the, you know, into the end of the, of the language. Um, it's the classes where I thought these like, Oh, these might be hard programming classes. They weren't, they weren't, um, they were, you have, we have great instructors at the high school. So balance your coursework with, yes, take, take the literature classes or take, but you have a lot of room where you can take a programming class. You don't have to take them all, but take one, like the MySQL class or the Python class. Take the ILS class because um, they're not as hard as you might think they are. And it's, it's really interesting that, uh, so the tech work that I do, I do very complex tasks, yes, but some of the some of the the tasks I do on a daily basis aren't aren't super difficult. There's just maybe a lot, a lot some a lot some days than others, but <laughs> but yeah, you'd be amazed. Like, don't don't um, for you your your high school students. You're in a graduate program. You're all really intelligent. Take those programming. You might you might like it. You know, and, and to, to my, to my uh, experience, I became a young adult librarian. I became a teen librarian. I, and, but I took these programming classes and the, these programming classes, like MySQL is still offered. It was offered like when I took it about, um, oh wow, it's about 15 years ago. So if you think that they're going to be outdated, they're not because you're going to have that groundwork to learn a different language, programming language or learning how to use a different database. I don't think those things change like that fundamental understanding changes. So please, please take these classes. I, they'll, they'll be really helpful in your work some way or another. You know. Okay, any, any last questions that we have for Ryan? And again, I would emphasize he's, he's wonderful to talk with and to reach out to and very willing to field questions from you. So if we don't have any other questions tonight, don't hesitate to follow up with him. Yeah, send me an email, argan at elcamino.edu. All right. If, if we don't have any other questions, then I will wrap us up by saying, Ryan, thank you so much for doing this. That was absolutely fascinating. And I hope everyone has a great rest of the evening. Thanks yeah. so much. Yeah. Good luck, everybody. You'll get, you'll get through this. So.